Okay, Tov, good morning. For those who are learning Dafyomi, you may have uh, gotten a little bit challenged by the sugi here on Daf Nun Zayin Omid Beis. So that's where we want to start. And Amir Hashem, if you have a Gemara in Durham, it'll be it'll be a pleasure to go through the Gemara with you, and then we'll see the Otzer Hayunim here. So on Nun Zayin Omid Beis, if you count down from the top of the Omud. Six lines down, you'll see Yishmael Ish Kfar Yama. And the question was, he took a Batsal that was growing, that had grown during Shvius. So it had Kedusha Shvius. That means you're not allowed to do, to destroy it. You're not allowed to uh, desecrate it. You have to allow anyone to take it. Maybe there's a mitzvah of Achila. And he took this Batsal of Shvius that has Kedusha Shvius. Unito Bishminis. And he waited until the eighth year, and during the eighth year, he planted it. And what happens is that if you plant a batsal or shum or the like in the ground, then it grows sprouts. And we're going to talk about Rabu Gidulov al Ikaro. Those are the key words here in the sugya. Rabu Gidulov al Ikro. So you'll see that the Gemara is distinguishing between two categories. There's what's called Gidulov, the sprouts that grow. They grew during Shemitas, during the eighth year, and they are not sanctified with Kedusha Shviyas. But the Ikar, which is the Batsal, which he planted on the eighth year, but it had grown during the seventh year, and therefore it had Kedusha Shviyas. And on this issue, on this scenario, we have a suffix of Yishmael Ishkvar Yom. This is his suffix. Gidulov heter. On the one hand, the gidulim, that which sprouted, that which grew in the eighth year, is heter. It doesn't have all the sur and the prohibitions of shvius. And for example, there's something called zmana beer in shvius, that after it's kolachayim and asodno, when the animals can no longer eat from that particular min, then you have a mitzvah beer, which according to some Rishonim means you have to destroy it. So as far as the Ikar is concerned, the Batsal itself, which is sanctified with Kedusha Shvius, that's Osur. However, since Rabu Gidulov al Ikaro, which means that there are more, there's a greater volume in the sprouts than in the Batsal from which those sprouts grew. So you really have a rove tip, tipping in favor of Heter because those Gidulim are Gidule Shminis and are free of all the restrictions of Shvius, but on the other hand, the Ikar, from which these sprouts grew, has Kedusha Shvius. And here's the suffix of Yishmael Ish Kfar Yoma. And everybody knows where Kfar Yoma is, I'm just joking. Anyway, so Kevan de Rabu Gidula Meikoro is, do we say that, on the one hand, Osan Gidule Heter Malin Esha Isur. The word Malin here means Mevatlim. So since we have a rove that's called Rabu Gidulov, we have a greater volume in the Gidulim than we have in the Ika. The Gidulim is Gidule Heter because it's Shminis. Therefore, it's Mevatel even the Ika. Why? Because it's rove. And we have Allah that if you have a Tarovis of Isur and Heter, then the rov heter is mavatul Isu. Oh, what's the other tzad in Yishmael Ishkvar Yomah's suffix? Lo. The Gemara just used the word lo. It doesn't explicate exactly why, why Yishmael has a uh, hesitation here and he suspends the principle in the second side of the suffix. He suspends the principle of bitul berov. And some Rishonim will see are going to learn that this is not called the Tarovis, because the Tarovis, by definition, means indiscernible. You cannot discern the Iser from the Heter. Here, clearly, we can point to the Heter, and we can point to the Iser. We can point to the Gidulim that are Rov, and that's Heter for Shminis. And we can point to the Batsal of Shvius, which is Isur, and that's not called the Tarovis. And therefore, lo. What's the sheet that there is a Tarovis? The sheet that there is tarovis means that this is all one entity, meaning the sprouts are connected to the to the ikar. In other words, you haven't detached the sprouts from the batsa, so it's all one entity. And even though it is discernible, 
That's even though it's in the story. It's... Correct. In other words, <laughs> according to one sheet, the Tarovas is defined by the connection between the Isa and the Heter. If they're all connected in a way that right now you can't detach them, although physically you could detach them, but right now you don't detach them, then the Rove is Mavatel the Ikar, meaning the Rove is Mavatel the Mute, and the Heter is Mavatel the Isa. <laughs> but according to the second side, some Rishonim argue, this does not qualify as a tarovis. Why? Because I can see the gidulim, which are shminis. I can see and point to the ikar, which is shvius. And that's not cool. That doesn't qualify as a tarovis. And therefore, we do not apply. We do not apply rov. However, there's another sheet in the rishonim to explain the second side in Yishmael. and that seems to be the sheet of the Ran, Although he doesn't explain it. Mefura, she doesn't say it explicitly, but we have a principle in Mesech Techulim, which is called Yotze Minatome Tome. So, for example, let's say you have an Of Tome, a non kosher bird, and it lays an egg. What's the status of that egg? And that's called Yotze, which means that the status of the Ikar, which in this case is the Of itself, imposes itself on the Beitzo, which is Yotze. So, if you have Object A, which is clearly also, and it produces object B. So object B is a product of object A. That's called Yotze. And the Gemara derives from many psukim that Yotze men atome tome. Now, in this case of the Gidulim, you might want to argue that this is called Yotze. Again, we'll see the other side in just a second, but let's follow this logic, this uh, line of reasoning. If the Batsal is Shvius, and therefore it's Osur, and the Batsal has now produced the Gidulim, then the Gidulim are what we call Yotze. Do you follow that? It's a product of something. And something which is a product of something else is automatically is automatically Osur. Another example, like Shvius after this man beer is considered Isur Zetan. Say it again? Shvius after this man beer is considered yeah, uh, it, right, it's it. considered Dover also. Again, you have to go through, I don't know if I'll have time today, it's probably an hour's discussion, all the four four different sheets of Rishonim, what Zman beer is. But, but let's go in a very superficial way. In other words, I'm telling you right up front that this is uh, probably not accurate at all, but just for the purpose yeah. of uh, Lisaber to Ozen, as we say, Shvius, after Zman beer, is a Hefta di Sur, which means it has to be burnt. Truth is, again, many Rishonim will say it doesn't have to be burnt. What you have to do is you have to take it out of your house. You have to make it hefke. You have to invite the Aniyim. The Ram has a unique shita that you have to give it to your Shechenim and make sure they have Mazan Shtei Sudos and you're allowed to leave for yourself Mazan Shtei. Very complicated. Exactly all the shitas in beer. But many of the Rishonim agree that after a certain period of time, let's say you made it hefke and still, for whatever reason, it's there in front of you, you have to destroy it. Hence the word beer, like beer chametz, you have to destroy chametz. But again, I, I don't want to get off uh, of the main topic for today, which is gidulim. So let's just summarize what we have here. We have here in the case of gidulim a tug of war between the ikar, which in this case is kadosh v'kdusha shmiyas, and the gidulim, which in this case is shminis. So the gidulim are rov, and they're called heter, whereas the ikar, which is the batzal of shmiyas that he planted, that is Isur. And now Yishmael vacillates back and forth. He has one side to say, well, you have Rov here. And the Rov and the Gidulim are going to change the status of the Batsal, which is the Ikar. Why? Because of Rov. And he sees that we can apply the principle of Rov here. In this side, Yishmael mm-hmm. understands that the Gidulim and the Ikar are sort of like one entity. They're indivisible. Again, in a conceptual way. I'm not saying physically you can't split them and detach them. But from a conceptual perspective, they're viewed and defined as one entity. Now, in this one entity, you have to decide, is it Shviz or is it Shminis? So the first side in Yishmael says, well, if it's one entity, then let's see where the rove is. Let's identify this connection, this one entity, based on the rove. You know, if if let's say you had, um, you know, 50 states in the union in America, right? So let's say if you come to the conclusion that most of the states in the union belong to the north, 
and the minority belonged to the Confederate States. Okay, we have someone here from Texas. So I have to watch what I say over here. But I don't know. Was was I don't know. Anyway, so we would say that you know we could define the nation of America based on its role if we see it all as one entity. So Rabbi Shmuel is saying you have this connection here between the Ikar, which is Shvius, and the Gidulim, which are Shminis, and you want to define what this one single entity is. You know, you're not uh, Freudian schizophrenic, so you have to find one entity, one identity. The answer is going to be wrong. The second side of Rabbi Shmuel could be understood in many, many different ways. We'll just suggest uh, two possible ways of understanding why Rove would not operate here. One way is to say it's not really a Tarovis, because we could discern the difference between the Ikar and the uh, Gidulim. They remain two separate entities in that sense. And another way of saying it is that perhaps the Gidulim are now a what we call a Bria Chadosha. It's a brand new entity. It didn't exist before. It's Shminis. And as a brand new entity, it cannot have any impact on an old entity, meaning the Batsal, which clearly was Kadosh B'Kedusha Shviyas because it was grown during Shviyas. Now, what's unique about the sugya that we're about to learn is that it's going to give us sort of like an overview of all of Zeroim. We're going to be covering now not only Shvius, but we're going to talk about Truma. We're going to talk about Arlo. We're going to talk about Klaya Kerem. We're going to talk about Maisros. I mean, it's just unbelievable how, you know, the Chazal say Talmud Bavli, not just because it's Babylonian, but because it's Bolo Menachol. This is a perfect example. So if you're learning in Tafyomi, on the one end, this is a very challenging daf because, you know, you want to get a, a, a flavor of Nidarim, of Masech the Nidarim. What we're about to learn here has very, very little to do with Masech the Nidarim, if anything at all. <laughs> I mean, two blot later, the Gemara tries to bring a raya one way or the other from the mission of Nidarim. But on the other end, if you're learning the daf, because you want to get a little taste and a little picture of all of Shas, this is like a wonderful example where you can get a picture of, of, uh, of Zerayim from, uh, from, this, from this particular, from this particular sugi. So I, I want to just take a break here to wish a refuah shleimah to a number of people here uh, who are on Zoom, either they themselves or their children or their grandchildren or their great-grandchildren. Okay, so we have Yair. Thank you for accommodating. Thank yes, you. And we have Jonathan here and we have Tzvi. Uh, everybody should have a Rafua Shlema. And Amen. if anyone tells you that COVID is not going around now, that's absolute checker. Okay, <laughs> in any event. I tested negative. <laughs> okay, I, I tested negative three times in the last week, but my wife says, oh, whatever. Anyway, so <laughs> now we have this question of Yishmael Ishkvar Yama. And he comes in front of Rabbi Ami. Rabbi Ami Lohavi Biyoda, he couldn't give an answer to this question. He didn't know whether the rov, Gidulim of Heter, of Shminis, overpowers the mute of the Ikar, of the Batsal itself, the Ikar, which is Shviz, or the other way around, the status of the Gidulim is to be determined by the Ikar because of Yotze. As we said before, the Gidulim don't have an independent status or identity because they were produced by the Ikar, by the Batsal, which has the Surim of Kedusha Shvi. Slohavi Biyode and Rabbi Ami couldn't answer this question. So what does what does this uh, Yishmael do if he couldn't get an answer from Rabbi Ami? You know, you try a different rabbi. Okay, also the coming to Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha. Okay, he was uh, Napach and uh, Poshetle, and Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha had an answer to this question. His answer was based on a, a ruling of Rabbi Yanai. Rabbi Yanai spoke about a case of Truma. Now, watch what happens. You have Eurokos. And Yerokos, at least on a Drabonan level, are chayev in Truma. He was mafresh Truma. And now he has a Batsal that is Truma. Okay, now he plants the Batsal. It produces sprouts, as we said before, Gidulim. And Rabu Gidulav al Ikaro. 
comes along Rabbi Yana, he says, because there's a rove in the Gidulim, and keep in mind the Gidulim are not Truma, it's going to be Mavatel, the Batsal, the Iker of Truma. So you see that in this tug of war between the Iker and the Gidulim, the Gidulim have the upper hand, and if they're rove, they have the ability, the capacity, if you will, to be Mavatel the Iker. So imagine you take something that's truma. Uh, Adam and I discussed yesterday whether he was allowed to do such a thing. Probably not. You know, to take a batzal of truma and plant it in the ground such that you undermine the Kedusha's truma, that can't, be, that can't be allowed. But he went ahead and he did it. And now, post facto, according to the ruling of Rabbi Yanai, the Gidulim overcome and and completely negate the status of the Ikar, because what, what advantage does the Gidulim have? Rov, and Rov is therefore Male or Mavatel Es Hamiut. We see this as one entity. You have to decide whether it's Kaddish Bektushas Truma with all these Surim of Zarus, or it is not. And the answer is, we look at the Rov. And the Rov of this entity uh, gives you what? Gives you... The Gidulim, the Gidulim are in the row. For the Gidulim are not Truma. They don't have the status of Kedusha, of Truma. So in effect, Rabosai, <laughs> it seems that based on Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha's equation to Rabbi Yanai, we now have an answer to determine the suffix of Yishmael, which wins out in the battle between Gidulim and Ikar, Gidulim of Heter, which are Rov, and the Ikar, which is Asur, but it's the Biut. What's the answer, Abosai? Are you with me? Gidulim. Gidulim. the Rov is Mavatel, the Miut, and everything is Muta. Now, keep in mind that in both cases, both scenarios, the scenario of Yishmael, where the Gidulim was Shminis, and therefore they were not subject to the Surim and the restrictions of Shmis. And in the case of Rabbi Yanai, where the Gidulim were not Truma. In both cases, the thumb is going up in favor of Heter. And the Heter is very, very far-reaching because it means that not only are the Gidulim Mutter and we're completely disqualifying and ignoring the principle of Yotze, which would take us back to the Ikar, but moreover, we're even applying a Din of Bittal which allows us to be matir, the original Iser. So you started with the Batzal of Iser, either Shvius or Truma, and you end up being matir, that <coughs> Batzal, which means that none of the restrictions of Shvius apply, and in the case of Truma, all the Zarim mm-hmm. in the world are allowed to eat this Batzal. Now this is called Lokola Zera. What does it mean Lokola Zera? What happens in the case of an onion <laughs> is that when you plant the onion and it grows sprouts, the onion remains intact, as opposed to chitim and other starts of dogon, right? In all cases of dogon, it's called kala zera. That means when you plant a seed or a kernel of the grains, then it completely disintegrates into the ground and magically, again, I'm not a botanist, and magically grows whatever grows. It's going to turn out that this whole sugya, as we'll see inside in the Yotzer Yudim, only applies to a batzal and the like, which is called lo kola zera. But in the case of kola zera, not an onion, but rather a grain or a seed, in those cases, kuliamolo pligi, everybody agrees that once you plant it and it sort of rots or disintegrates in the ground, that it's mutter. The question whether the Batsal retains its status of Easter is only because Batsal is called Lo Kola Zera. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Now, Rabbi Yirmiya is a little bit upset over here. Shavik Mar train v'avikichat. What does that mean? We have a principle of of Yochid v'Rabim Halacha ke Rabim. Correct. And here, according to the logic of Rabbi Yirmiya, we're going to bring two cases, one from Arla and one from Klai Kerem. The case of Arla is going to be addressed by Rabbi Yochanan and the case of Klai Kerem by Rabbi Yonasan. 
And both of these Amoraim, in this struggle, in this tug of war between the Giduim that arose and the Ikar, which is mute, they are going to assume, as we'll soon see, that it is the Ikar that is Moshech the Gidulim, which is the exact opposite of Rabbi Yanai. So Rabbi Yanai now becomes the Yochid, and he's up against the Rabbin. Who are the Rabbin here? Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yonasan. So let's go through the rulings of Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yonasan to prove that in this battle between the Ikar and the Gidulim, we view the Gidulim as an extension of the Ikar, and therefore the Isar of the Ikar is going to impact on the Gidulim. Not the other way around, the way Rabbi Yanai said, that you can take a Batzal of Truma, and through the Gidulim, you can completely nullify the status of Truma, of the Ikar, because the Gidulim are Mavatel the Ikar, and not like the final conclusion of Rabbi Yitzhak Nafka regarding the suffix of Rabbi Yirmiya, of Yishmael, uh, where is he from? Uh, Kfar Yoma. Like he was probably a sailor. Anyway, so Yishmael's final conclusion would seem to be, according to the argument of Rabbi Yanai, if you equate it with Rabbi Yanai, Rabbi Yitzhak Nafka's equation, that we could take a batzal of Shvius and completely null and void the status of Shvius with all its isurim based on the Gidulim, because the Gidulim are rove and then Mavatul the Ikar. But now we're going to prove that although that's true according to Rabbi Yanai, in the case of Truma, but in the cases of Ola and Rabbi Yochanan, and the case of Klaya Kerem and Rabbi Yonason, they both paskin, that is the Ikar that determines the Gidulim. So what do we have in Rabbi Yochanan? Rabbi Yochanan spoke about Yaldo Shesivcha Bizkena. So this has to do with the process of grafting, what's called in Hebrew, har kava, laharkiv. And what he did was he had a yalda. Yalda means that the fruits on this tree are orla. Yalda means the first three years of the tree, since the tree, the sapling was planted. And he takes the yalda and he grafts it onto a zikena. How old is a zikena? Three years old and more, right? So now we have a grafting of peros of orla onto a tree that's not oral, it's beyond the years of oral. And now that tree, which has received the grafting from the Yalda, that Zikena now produces fruits. So in a sense, it's the, let's call it the branch of the Yalda that is generating peros in the Zikena. And what is Rabbi Yochanan Paskin? Afal Pisho Sifa Masayin. The volume of the peros that grew from the zikena after the grafting is 200 to 1, <clears throat> meaning against the 1 of the of the Arla, we have 200. Now, Arla is Batal bin Masayan. So we have the Shir Bittal. So the Gidulim are Rove, a lot more than Rove, 200%, meaning, well, I shouldn't say 200%. What would be the percentage? Like or two thousand percent? What would, what would 20, it be? 20, right, twenty thousand. Okay, so it's a ratio of twenty thousand, and certainly that's more than a rove. And you would have said that that should be mavatel, the peros of the alda of the orla. No, we're going to go boss of the alda because it's the alda that produces on the tree that fruit that grew on this cana. So we see that according to Rabbi Yochanan, in the case of orla. In this tug of war, as we called it, what is gover on what? It's the ikar that determines the gidulim, despite the fact that the gidulim are masayim and have the sheer bittel. And now we have Rabbi Yonason in the case of Klayakaren. He took a batzal that was planted, mixed together with a kerem, with a vineyard. <clears throat> so now this batzal becomes Klayakaren, which is like oral, it's also by no, you have to destroy it, and so forth and so on. And now he rips out the kerem, separates the kerem from the batzal. The batzal is kloya kerem. Now he plants the batzal. The batzal now produces sprouts, gidulim. The gidulim are rove, not only rove, but let's say they're mosayim. And you have the shear of bittel, and yet Rabbi Yonason says, also, everything is also, because the ikar determines the gidulim. So how is it that Rabbi Yitzhak Nafka predicates his conclusion by standing on the shoulders of Rabbi Yanai, 
in the case of Truma, with all due respect to Rabbi Yanai, we have the cases of Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yonasan, both of whom go basar ikar, and therefore everything is asur, in the cases of Orla and Koya Kerem. And therefore two against one, we paskin like the road. But now the Gemara says <clears throat> that we have another statement of Rabbi Yochanan in the case of Maser. Now, what's the case of Maser? You have in the hands of the Levi Maser, and the Levi is now obligated in Trumas Maser. But he failed to do so at this point. Just one second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. Litro Bitsom Shetikna. Okay, I'm sorry. I missed the word Shetikna. Again, there's so many cases here. You have to hold cup, as we say. So what happened? He's got a certain Mida called the Litra of Bitsom Shetikna. Let's underline the word Shetikna. Tikna means he was mafrish, everything that he had to be mafrish, and therefore it's no longer Asur Midin Teva. Now he takes this litra of B'tzolim, which again is low color zarab, and it produces, and, and he plants it, and it produces sprouts. Those sprouts are tevel, because you haven't been mafris, trumas, and maestros from those. Misaseres lefi kula. Unbelievable. Now Rabbi Yochan is being quoted as saying, that he has to be ma'aser, not only the gidulim, but even the ikar. Now watch it, the ikar was tikna. He had already been mafresh. So it turns out that this litra shel b'tzolim will have a second afrosha. In addition to the original afrosha of ma'aser, we have a second afrosha. So the Gemara says, Alma, what do we see? If you're telling me that you already were mafish truma from the B'tzolim, correct? Tikna. Yet the Gidulim, which are Tevel, are going to have such an impact on the Ikar that Alma Osom Gidulim Mivatlim Ikar. You're going to have to be Ma'asar a second time around on the Ikar. So we see just the opposite. We try to prove from Rabbi Yochanan, apparently the different uh, traditions as to what Rabbi Yochanan held, but we tried to prove for the original Rabbi Yochanan in Orla and Rabbi Yonasan in Klaya Kerem that it's the Ikar that determines the Gidulim. And we had against them Rabbi Yana in the case of Truma that the Truma no longer has the din of Truma because the Gidulim are rove and them of the Ikar. Now we have another statement attributed to Rabbi Yochanan, in which once again the gidulim are mevatel es ha'ikar. However, here's where we have to take a, a little bit of a break and create a scorecard. Until now, when we spoke about the gidulim being mevatel the ikar, what was the status of gidulim in terms of heter and iser? Heter, correct? You had shminis, or you had you had chulin as opposed to, let's say, truma. And therefore, your dis, your determination that the gidulim of Avato the Ikar was a kula. Now we have just the reverse. Because the batsal, the literature shel batsalim that he planted were, were hete. And now we're saying the gidulim have a status of tevel, and the gidulim are being Avato the Ikar, but that's already lechumra. Now you're going to say that the Gidulim of Isur are Mavatel, the Gidulim of Hete. So the Gemara <laughs> therefore says, Dilma Lechumra Shiny. Therefore, we should say that perhaps Rabbi Yochanan would, generally speaking, you would hold that according to the strict letter of the law, the Ikar will determine the Gidulim. And that fits very well with Rabbi Yochanan about Orla, who says that the Gidulim on the Zkena even though they are Masayim, nevertheless, they are also because of the Ikar, which is Orla. And here too, Rabbi Yochan would have said the same thing, and everything would have been determined by the Ikar, if not for the fact that we have a Chumrah, and the Rishonim are going to go to town here, why the Rabbanan made this Chumrah. Is it possible that we can make a kind of, you have to think it out, the distinction is not necessarily the Ikar and the Gedulim, it's the nature of the Isra itself. 
Meaning, meaning what? Meaning Chuma Maisa may the, the Itzer Chuma Maisa may be different than the Itzer of Orla. Of ah, you want to take each Itzer and define it onto its own. Right, and maybe that's why in, in one case the, the Gidulim had an effect on the Itzer and in the other case it was better. Okay, so for that we would have to see as I told you, this is a very, very long sugya, but we'd have to see just one second. Oh, on Nunches Amid Beis, if you want to just fast forward for a moment, again, the trouble with the sugya is you have to organize it in a way that everything sort of fits into a kind of a logical puzzle. But he says the following, Omar Ab Yitzchak, so let's see if we can find the place for a moment here on Nunches Amid Beis, if you want to, I think we'll count up from the bottom of the omen. It's a small omen anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines up from the top, from the bottom. Seven lines up from the bottom of Nunches Omid Beis. Om Rabbi Yitzchak, shiny shvis. Now, this is the first juncture in this very long, complicated sugya that drags on and on about Gidulim and Ikar and Rabu Gidulim ala Ikar, in which we're going to focus on one particular aspect of Zeroim, one particular Iser, which is the Iser of Shvis. And we're going to set up a contrast in which it could be very well possible that the reason why, in the case of, let's say, Yishmoel, when we go back to the Batzal of Shvis that was planted in Shminis, the final conclusion might be that the Gidulim are Mavatel, the Ikar, which is Shvis. But that's a very specific, unique halacha to Shvis and will not apply beyond the purview of Shvis. What makes Shvis so unique? So this has to do with a Pasuk that says, Vishavsa Ha'aretz that the Iser of Shvius is a result of the fact that the land has to be has to rest. And the Kedusha Shvius is a product of the Shvisas Ha'aretz. And that's called in the Lashon HaShas, Hol Isura Al Yidei Karka. So in other words, the land of Israel is endowed with Kedusha. That Kedusha is what generates the Kedusha of the Peros, that grow from that karka. So the Kedushas Peros and all these Surah Meshviyas are a result of Kedushas Karka. And if that generates the Isur, then in the flip side, B'teilosa nami al yedei karka. Just like you are Oser al yedei karka, the, the, what generates the Isur Shviyas is karka. So therefore what could be Mavatil the Kedushas Shviyas is likewise karka, which means that if you took the Isa Shvius, and you planted it, which is exactly what happened, if you remember, in the scenario of Yishmael. He took the Matzal of Shvius and he planted it. Now what grows is going to be Matir, that which was Shvius. Why? Because we have a two-way street over here. We say that the Karka generates an Isur, and now the Karka could change that Isur into Heter. Pele Vesvara, the Gemara. And the Gemara is now setting up a contrast between Shvius and Orla and Klaya Kerem. In Orla and Klaya Kerem, there's another factor that generates the Isar. In the case of Orla, it's the Zman, meaning we have to wait a certain amount of time until the Peros become a Mutabishum Orla. During that um, limited amount of time of three years, that generates the Isar Orla. Or in the case of Klaya Kerem, it's the fact that he has a taroves, he has a mixture of two different minim. That is what generates the Isar. So the karka itself is not enough. You could have a karka that generate that, that produces fruits after the third year and then not also be from Orla. So you see that the karka doesn't generate the Isar Orla. It's the Chisar Zman. And in the case of Kalaya Kerem, you could have the same fruits that were generated by karka without a taroves aminim. And yet the karka would not generate any Isar of Kalayim. The Isar Kalayim is a result of Tarovas Haminim, not a result of Kedusha's Karka. And therefore, you cannot assume and, and flip it around and say that the Karka, now when you grow these Gidulim, is going to be Mata the Ikar. 
because since the Kaka was not responsible to generate the Easter from the get-go, it cannot remove the Easter. So the Gemara wants to know about Maser, because if you recall, we said about Maser, that if you started with a litter of Maser, that was, that was Tevel, and you planted it in the Karka, and now you have the, both the Ikar, which is Tevel, and the Gidulim, and the Gidulim are Ke'esel litra, which means that you have enough to be Mavatalit, Chayeves be Maser. Nevertheless, we're not going to apply the din of Bittel. But you just told me that if the Isur is generated by the Gidule Karka, then Gidule Karka could be Matur that Isur. And in the case of Maser, the Torah says it's got to be Degoncha. It's got to be that which grows from the Karka. So the Gemara answers, and this you'll have to see on Dafnud Tes, as I said, it's a very long sugya. And it says, Amri, on the top of now, this is a very strange kind of Gemara. I mean, we know that it's the Karka that generates the Din of Maser. But he's saying, no, you can generate and produce the grains from the ground, and yet there's no Maser. When does Maser emerge? Only after Digun, which means that you have to... You have to remove the husk and the chaff and you have to do winnowing and then you have to make it into a Cree and make it into a uh, uh, an, an arema, you know, into a, a, a pile and all, they may even need yes, uh, uh, bias. I mean, there are all sorts of conditions that have to be met before Maser emerges. So in that sense, Maser is not purely a result of Kedusha's Karka, and therefore the Karka cannot be Matir. And in that sense, Maser belongs to the same category as Arla and Kloya Kerem. And by the way, it's only at this point on Daf Nun Tes that the Gemara comes back to the Mishnah on Nun Zainom and Aleph of Nidarim. And that's going to be the Kasha of Rami Bar Chama. Because a man took a Konam, he took a Neder, Peros Elu Alai. What does it mean, Elu? He points to certain Peros that are sitting on his table, and he says that these payrolls should be a konem on me, a nisa neder. And that's like hegdesh. What's, what's unique about hegdesh? You have, uh, let's say, a whole basket of fruits, which are chulim, and you point to some payrolls or a basket of payrolls, and you designate it as hegdesh. And the din is that hegdesh, again, this is a whole sugi unto itself, but hegdesh generates an iser in what's called chilufeyem, and Giduleha. So that's a separate din in Hegdesh. So the Gemara is now assuming that when you took a cone of a Peros Elu, and we emphasize the word Elu, so he didn't prohibit the entire mid, but he specified these particular Peros that are sitting in front of him on the table, and he created a konom, that's called Hegdesh. And therefore, it's also Bechilufim Ugidulim. However, in the next case, which he says, Ani Ochel, which he says, that he won't eat anavim, in general, he won't eat grapes, so he's prohibiting the entire min, then he's mutu b'chilufeyen. What I'd like to do now, with your permission, again, we're skipping a beautiful sugi here, on daf nun chesom in beis, for the meantime, of davash yeshel matirin, which, I don't know, maybe we should have a whole shear on that. But let's take a look in the otzer iyunin, which I think you might have in your uh, in your phones. So first, the chapter number one in what's called Marachan Nun Vav on page Aleph addresses itself to the case of Dover Shazaro Kola, which is not the focal point of our discussion of our sugya. Our sugya is talking about a batsal, which is called Ein Zaro Kola. But if you have, let's say, uh, we mentioned chitin, siorin, all the kinds of seeds and kernels that you planted. That's called zarakola, which means that you no longer see a relationship between the gidulim and the ikar, because the ikar is kola. So there's no taroves in the gidulim. There's nothing left from the gidulim uh, in the gidulim from the original ikar. The ikar is completely gone and void. Now, you might ask me, but wait a minute. We said before that according to some Rishonim, the problem of the Gidulim and why the Ikar might 
uh, impose itself on the Gidulim is because of the din of Yotze. And we would say that even if Zaro Kola, the Gidulim are still Yotze. I mean, what produced the Gidulim? But apparently what we're saying is that if it's Zaro Kola, there's no longer Yotze. You know, if you have an Oftame and a Beitza from the Oftame, the Oftame is still intact and the Beitza is produced by the Oftame. But here, the production of the Gidulim is is only only shy it only emerges after the original ikar is color so there's nothing left of the ikar that can impose itself and an impact on the gidulim now the exception to this rule is called gidule truma by the way i don't know if you ever heard of a an italian scholar from 600 years ago his last name was fago and he wrote something called a book called Gidule Truma. So I, I have to own a copy of the Gidule Truma from Venice 400 years ago. And the reason why I bought the Sefer is because his first name was Azaria. <laughs> anyway, so the Gidule Truma is an Easter Dirabana. Normally, um, if you're talking about Truma of Chitim, Siorim, and Dagon, which is called Kola. Zaro, therefore, there's no Isa Gidule, but the Rabbanon made an Isa called Gidule Truma. And that's a separate Zera, the Rabbanon called Gidule Truma. And there's an entire Sugi in Shabbos, Taf Yud Zayin Omid Beis, which is one of the most complicated Sugis in Shas, about the Takana of Gidule Truma, and there's Machlokes Amoraim as to why the Rabbanon made such a Zera. In any event, there's a sheet of tosis which you might want to make note of. It's not relevant to us today, but on the left column here, Hatosvas, he wants to say that all of these distinctions between Zaro Kola and Ain Zaro Kola only apply to Isuri Achila. But in the case of Isuri Hana, like Orla and Kilayim, the Gidulim are Asur, even if it's Zaro Kola. Why? Because if not directly, indirectly, when you benefit from the Gidulim, you're, you're benefiting from the original Zera that produced those Gidulim. And the original Zera, in the case of Orla Klayaklarim, is Osir Bano. So this is a Chiddush Atosis that even after Zaro Kola, the Isar Ano is still generated on the Gidulim, which is a fascinating issue unto itself. And if you take a look on page Bays, you'll see a paragraph that starts with Inya Nidarim, and of course, he quotes the Mishnah of a person who says, Peros elu alai bekonam. And if he adds the word hana, then it's also begidulim, according to Tosvis, even bedover shezaro kola. Why? Because now the konam generated an isra hana, and therefore the gidulim, if he benefits from them, he's indirectly benefiting from the ikar, from the original peros, which are also hana. So he's getting hana from the original payrolls, even though it's kola zera. That's according to Tosus. And now you'll see on the left column of page Bays, where he presents the suffolk in the Gemara. And you'll see in the second paragraph, after presenting uh, Yishmael uh, Ishkar Yoma's suffolk, he has the Das Haran. Now, you want to put two fingers... Oh, I don't know if you could do this on your phone, but uh, if you had the text itself, you want to put one finger on Das Haran, which is here on page Bays, And then if you fast forward to page Gimel, you'll see the third paragraph on the right column is Harash. So he's now presenting two interpretations of Yishmael and the Suffolk, one of the Ran and the other the Rush. According to the Ran, as we presented it before, the Gemara vacillates, Yishmael vacillates on the following point. What's the status of the Gidulim? Do the Gidulim separate themselves as a separate entity? And that's because they are Shminis, let's say in the case of Yishmael, and that's a separate entity. They grew during Shminis. Once you separate the Gidulim as a separate entity, then since they're the rove, vis-a-vis the Ikar, they're going to be Mavata the Iser. Oh, and here you'll see two and a half lines up from the bottom of the paragraph, Das. Ein dinom ki ik, ein dinom ki ikar umu, no, I'm sorry, that, that was the first time. Then we go back to the other side. I switched around the order. Right? 
You see that word Yotzim on the second line. You want to underline that word Yotzim in a Iser. Why? Because the Batsal of Shvius is Eino Kola, right? It doesn't disintegrate. It's still whole and intact. Is Dinam Ki Ikar Atzmo Vasurim. You know, it's, it's impossible to talk about Bittel and the Gidulim of Shminis are going to be Vatel, the Kedusha Shvius of the Batzal Ikar, because the Gidulim themselves have the same status as the Ikar. Why? Because Nimshachim Vyotzim Min Ha'ikar. And I think he's operating here, midin yotze. Oh, and here's the other side that we mentioned earlier, that the Gidulim have a separate status, a separate entity, and they are Shminis. And we're not going to apply the din of yotze. And therefore, once you, once you classify the Gidulim as a separate entity, and they are rov of heter, of Shminis, they now have the power to be mavato the ikar. And in the next paragraph, he quotes the Karen Ora. The Karen Ora says, mm-hmm. what are the two tzadim in Yishmael? Number one, yesh tzad lomer she asurim agidulim. And here he quotes that sugi. I said it was in Chulin. It is in Chulin, but it's also in Bechoros. Sha yotze min atome tome. Right? And therefore, the status of the gidulim is equivalent to that of yotze. And therefore, the gidulim are dragged by the ikar and there are surim kamoa ika. What's the other side? Hagidulim vea ikar yiu mutar wai. Rabu gidulim ala ikar. Ken gama ikar misbatel vinase heter. Vi ain kan yotzim in iser. What do you mean ain kan yotzim in iser? Why not? He doesn't tell you why it's not yotzim in iser. So I looked at the footnote number Chav Gimel. And he says, Kavanoso, this is on the fourth line, or three lines up from the bottom, he says, This is unbelievable. You don't know what came first here, the chicken or the egg. There's like a, there's like a cycle here, you know, a circle. You don't know where to stop the circle. He's saying that because the Gidulim are rov, and the Gidulim grew during Shminis, we don't call it Yotze because they are a separate entity. And now, as a separate entity, they have the power to be Mavatel the Ikar, which was Shvius, with all the Yisurim of Shvius. And he says the reason for this is because the Ikar is now seen as a Birya Chadosha. I think, again, I can't speak on behalf of the Karen Ora, but I think what he has in mind is that even though the Gidulim are physically attached and they grow from the Ikar, nevertheless, we view the two, the Ikar and the Gidulim, as separate entities. And therefore, if you define the Ikar as a Birya Chadosha, then there's no Din of Yotze, because the Din of Yotze doesn't apply to the new Birya that emerged. It only applies to the original Birya, which was a Heftz of Isura, which was... Let's call it Shvius uh, Man Biuro. But now that we see the Ikar as a Birya Chadosha, now the Gidulim have the right to emerge as a separate independent status. And if they're rove, they could be Mavat of this Birya Chadosha, which is called the Ikar. But what he doesn't explain here is why do we have the right to call and classify the, the Ikar, meaning the, the Batsal Shal Shvius, as a Birya Chadosha? He doesn't answer that question. In any event, let's take a look at the rush, which is on page Gimel. You have page Gimel? And also, it's a little contradictory. If you're saying it's a, if it's a separate entity, and then, but then it's a bimata, that's the Birya Chadash, and then you're really saying it's one entity. You mean, on, on knowing this, right. you'd say Excellent, it's excellent. Ellie's making a great point back, here. <laughs> because entity. if we're applying Vittel, then we see them as one entity. And we're trying to define and identify that one single entity. But now you're telling me that the Ikar is a Biri Chadosha, which seems to imply that it separates itself from the Gidulim. And now you're going to turn around and say with the Gidulim of Avatel, that new entity uh, called the Ikar. Uh, but now you're seeing it as two separate entities. Uh, that's kind of the problem. If it's a new entity, then it's, how could it bring over the Kos Isser to the new entity? No, yeah, on the contrary, he's the saying he's saying he's explaining the other tzad in Yishmoel, right? Okay. The, the Karen Ora is trying to explain why is it 
that in one side of Yishmael, the Gidulam of Avato, the Ikar, right. and we ignore the principle of Yotze. And, and again, I'll read his language. He says, he says, Kavanoso shall ye de ribui ha Gidulim, ha Ikar Nasa Kibiri Chadosha. Well, wait a minute. That, that doesn't make any sense. I, I know there's Reba Gidulim, but there's still a, a problem of Yotze. So he's saying, no, it's not, not Yotze. Why? Because the Ikar is a Biryach Hadosha, finished Tana Mahuso. <laughs> I don't know how he has the right we to say a, such. Is there a precedent for Yotze in anything other than animals? Is there a precedent for Yotze? Before? I think Yotze applies to everything, uh, to Truma, to Maser. You know, all everything has a din of Yotze. Um Rab Chaim Brisk has lots, lots, and lots of Torah about Yotze. I mean, maybe Bulineder at some point we would maybe take upon ourselves to learn the sugi of Yotze. If you have access to the Encyclopedia Talmud, did let me know if there's an error called Yotze. In any event, let's fast forward now to the rush. The rush, which is your third paragraph on page Gimel Piresh, Shagidulim Atzmam Pashuche Mutarim. Listen to this. The rush says. And this is going to turn the sugya upside down, inside out. That Yishmael never had a suffix about the status of the Gidulim. The Gidulim were always mitarim. So forget about Yotze. I mean, the, the concept of Yotze, or the concept that the Ikar produced the Gidulim, doesn't even appear on the Richter scale of the rush. And the whole suffix is Legabi the Ikar. Do the Gidulim have the power to be Ravatal the Ikar? Or do we say, oh, which means you could discern the difference between the Ikar and the Gidulim. Therefore, it's not called the Taroves. And therefore, you can only apply Bittel in the Taroves. Okay, now we have a choice. We only have a few minutes left. I'm, I'm going to fast forward now to number Dalin, which is really, again, if we really wanted to do this well, we would have to study Rabbi Kivega here on number Gimel, but because of the, I think we've accomplished a great deal today, by the way, but here on page Dalid, um, he has Shviz. And if you look on the third line, he says, Din zem miyuchanu b'shviz, right? We say, we, in Yiddish, we say, a bezunder aloch in Shviz, that holvi surah yidei karka, he betel al yidei karka. That's the principle. Haran in the next paragraph, Mefaresh, Shasafeku, Bidin Torah. This entire suffix and the entire sugya of Yishmael in all its ramifications, both with regard to Shviz and with regard to Rabbi Yana's Truma and with regard to Rabbi Yochanan's Orla and Rabbi Yonason's Kalaya Kerem, all the cases are Bidin Doraisa. So that everything is on a Doraisa level. And therefore, Pirish Betiritz HaGemara, when the Gemara says that Shvius is different, because what generates the Isa and Shvius, it's the Karka, and therefore the Karka could be Mate or the Isa Shvius. He says, Yesh Chiluk Midoraisa, this distinction between whether the Isa is generated by the Karka or not, like in the case of Orla, we said it was Zman, Chisar and Zman. In the case of Kalei Kerem, it was Tarobas Habinim. In the case of Maser, it was Digun. All these distinctions are Doraisa. And Shvius on a Doraisa level is unique because Neseres al Yidei Yeniko min Karka. Kemo Dixiv Vishav Sahares. Lachain Holchim Baim. Be a rocko sacha lakita. Interesting. Let's underline those words. We have halach and shvius. It's mamish. This this halach is like so contemporary. It's like talking to us now. My wife and I went uh, the other day to buy uh, kishuim, and she said to me, "Wait a minute. These kishuim look different than the ones that we've been buying for the last I don't know a year or so. Like they were really healthy, big, fat, juicy kishuim. They looked Israeli. It didn't look like it was like." You know, it came out of the freezer in, in Italy or something like that. So it must be, and, and we, we we were in uh, Beitar. If you know about Beitar elite, you know, everything is uh, free of, of Kedusha Shmias. They don't rely on Haitha Mechira. So apparently that the, uh, the, the again, I'm not poskating, though, but the, apparently these Kishuim were Totzeret Eretz Yisrael, but they were Totzeret Shminis. And he's saying that Holchem Be Yerokos Achalakita, 
Why is it that for fruits, we're going to have a problem for the next who knows how many months? Again, for those who, right? And for wines, I don't know, it's going to take years until we get out of the problem of Shmiyas. And yet in Yerukos, I'm telling you that Yerukos that you're buying in the Shuk today might just be Shminas. And the answer is, of course, has lean in Basel Akita. In Yerukos, as opposed to all the other parts of Zerayim, which either go Basel Shlish or Basel, um, let's say, Chanata um, uh, in the case of Ilanos. Here it goes Basel Akita, Hainu. Sha'afim Gidlu Ruba Bashana Shishis, Kevich and Nishalu Vikarka. Wow, it's an amazing thing. When did you pluck these, these kishuim? At the beginning of Shvias. When did they grow? They grew during Shishas. But it doesn't matter. It has Kedusha Shvias. It dips into the Karka. Meaning as soon as the Karka generates before Lakita an element of Shvias, then with that Lakita you have Karkos Ross of Echel Lehepa. And now we're going to turn it upside down. Kishengadlu b'shvius, that's the Ishmael's case, and then milketu b'shminus. Okay, this is not a case of where he took the matzal and he replanted it, but rather it grew into shminus. Then hutru al yedei chibur lekarka. The fact that now I make a lekita and I harvest these yerokos in shminus from the karka, then the karka from the moment of lekita generates the status of that yerek, which means it's shminus. And it doesn't have Kedusha Shviz. And if you fast forward a little in the same paragraph, he says, Lachem, Afim Ikra B'Shviz, even though, let's say you were Oker, you uprooted a Yerek, like a Batsal, during Shviz, Chazav in Etar B'Shviz, and he plants them in Shviz, Yesh Bahem Bito Al Yedea Karka. It's through the Karka that the Ikra is going to be bought up. That's as far as Shvius is concerned. And that's a Dorais Alok. Okay, he also mentioned Maser here. Shalo Hayanika bin Akakos Rosom. Ella be Orla. Oh, take a look at that. Chizoran Hasman, who Sibasa Isur, Bikalayim. Hatarova Shalat Ben Aminim, who Sibasa Isur. Lachain Eno Betalim Al Yude Karka. Yo, it occurred to my mind that this possibly could shed a light on challah. Why? Because if you recall the dinam of challah, you need what's called Gilgul Isa. So the status of challah doesn't emerge until after Gilgul Isa. You know, in all these cases, you have like something that occurs and it's not the passage of time. In the case of Shvi, it's the fact that it's in the ground and you're passive, that's going to determine the status with the Shvius or Shminus. In the case of Arla, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's not so, in the, it's not clear in the case of Arla. In the case of Kalayim, it's more clear because he planted them Kalayim. Or in the case of Gilgal Esau, he has to knead the dough, knead with a K, right? Ubirach Ronim, he quotes the Karen Ora, the Chazanisha, and the Kilos Yaakov, so even though we're saying that the Shminis, the Batsal of Shminis, and all the Gidulim of Shminis are Mutter, and now we're going to say that even though this Batsal had Kiddush Shvius when he planted it, nevertheless, there's Bittel. What kind of din of Bittel is there? Where, where's Bittel here? He says it's not Bittel. According to the Gemara's Maskana, it's all based on whether there's Yenikim and Akarka. The Matir here is not Dine Bittel. And it's not called the Tarovas, as we said before in the Rush, that they're two separate entities. But rather, we have Allah of what? Of Yenikim and Akarka, that if the Gidulim now have Yenikim and Akarka, so therefore, Aslin and Bosa Lakita, and therefore the uh, Yenika of the eighth year is going to be Matir even the Batsal of the seventh year. That's not Midin Bittel. And this leads us to the Kasha of the Kiyos Yaakov, but now I think we're going to have to we're going to have to stop. So I'm just going to make a note for myself. You know, this is Shirei Bayit. There's a beautiful piece here from the Stipler, from the Kiyos Yaakov on the bottom of page Dalid. 
in the paragraph of Hiksha. Okay then? So I wish everyone a Rafur Shlema and I hope to see you face to face. I mean, I'm not a big Zoom guy. <laughs> yeah, you thank know? you for being accommodating. It's much better to be in person. Okay. Yes. All right. So Rafur Shlema to everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Colter. All right. Thanks, Rafur. Have a great day. Yeah. yeah thanks. Well, I'll have come a back. Great day. Okay. Good to see you guys. Be well. Okay, so according to this, we need to take out things during Shavuos or the end of Shavuos, take things out of the ground and then replant with and then it gets a new uh, on, the, on that side. No, without the Gidurim. You just put the basal in the ground in the, and, and then take it out just for the basal. Forget the Does it grow? Maybe if it grows... So I'm saying, how how, how long does if it, it grows grow? during Shemitah, you know, right. maybe that itself is enough right. to change its status. If you have a nikum and a karka, according to this explanation of the Achron. Right. But I think we're talking about a case where the Batzal was fully grown in Shemitah. I don't know if it's going to continue to grow during Shemitah if you just replant it. I don't know. So I'm saying, is, but do, you, do, you, do you need, do you need, according to the Gemara, do you need the Gedulim to have, actually to have grown? To then matir the basal itself. Absolutely, absolutely. It's got to grow during shmidus. If it doesn't grow during shmidus, then you don't have the karka to be matir the isa. Chaim, you got back the. Uh... Yeah, I did. Yeah, I left it with you. Yeah, doing. yeah she looks like a bar <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my little one. My yeah, husband. yeah. yeah. Liana, take it from you. Yeah. Why did you need the the? You can At the end, I didn't you. use it. What happened was that Charney decided I don't know why that she would come back to Yushalayim and take me to Yushalayim. Oh, okay. Which I is crazy. I found you a right to into Yushalam. I didn't know why you uh you, ah. you wanted a bus. Ah uh, no, I wanted a bus because I didn't think Charney was gonna come yeah. back and drive me to Yushalayim. <laughs> I don't, you know, love yeah, my, driving my, on yeah, buses. Ka so. Kalev is the one who knows all this stuff. Kalev is like uh yeah. he actually makes fun of me for using the Rav Kav, although I don't use it often. Yeah. Um, because he says that it's actually cheaper on the move it app. Use yeah, like it's like, also moving. Yeah, so I have to learn. Yeah, so maybe Colin will teach you how to do the move yeah. it. You know, yeah. move it out. Yeah. Very good. All right, Thank have you. a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. How are you, Steve? How's it going? <clears throat> Good. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing much better. You know, my Good. voice is still a little shaky and uh, my eyes are still tearing a lot, but uh, mm -hmm. Charney's not feeling so well now. Okay. So, but hopefully she's uh, past the worst, I, I hope. As of 8 o'clock this morning, it seems like she passed the worst. Okay, so what time is it now? It is 9.35, am I correct? 9.34, okay, we'll wait another minute. And you have the Otser Hayunim, because I wanted to finish that up. And we're up to number uh, Yud, I think, page Yud. I'd love to uh, request that they leave the lights on a little longer, but it's on a clock. Yeah, I think John John doesn't come on Tuesdays. He has, uh, I think, physical therapy or something. Okay. Let's see what we have here. <clears throat> 